All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today with me, I have Jim Swanson, who is a longtime supporter and volunteer of the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. And he and his wife, Lynn, are also big Japanese maple nuts, maple seeds, maple nuts. Uh, oh, wait, wait for the train to go by. Um, <laughs> and the whirly gigs, how's that? Yeah. And um, uh, they have a big Japanese maple collection of their own at home which we'll talk about a little bit. And they also take care of and do some stuff with the Japanese maples here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Um, they including, uh, I have them on my tree measuring volunteer team. He and his wife come out and they grab some tools and their uh, arboretum like to measure their trees and show the growth year over year. And so they're on the team that does the Japanese maples. Um, they do pruning, they've done tours and uh, here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum of our Japanese maples. And I know Jim has also spoken to some other groups, uh, Gardeners Wake County, about uh, Japanese maples as well. Uh, Jim is an interesting guy. We had lunch about a month ago and we we're talking and he's had three careers. Uh, he started off as a geologist. I don't know how long that lasted, not very long. I Eight years. Sense. Eight years. And then he switched over to software development and was a software designer for Hewlett Packard in Palo Alto uh, for a long time. And then he finished his career as a project manager uh, here in Raleigh. Uh, and his wife Lynn is, uh, or was, a, uh, uh, a garden designer and would design gardens for people. Um, and so they live in Raleigh now and they have a great uh, Japanese maple garden. Uh, they are also, the reason his wife Lynn is not here today though, is she is preparing for a big event here on here at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum on Saturday. We are gonna have the symposium of the International Maple Society. Uh, and Lynn is at home, uh, Lynn and Jim are organizing the whole thing. And Lynn is at home uh, getting that finished up. Uh, and Jim will talk a little bit about that too. Uh, we, um, we have some questions about that. I have got a lot of notes of things I want to ask Jim, and um, Blake is going to be throwing a lot of links into the chat um, of uh, 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 for extra reading material for you guys. So hopefully you will like that. So let's go ahead and get started. Jim, welcome. Thank you. Uh, and we are sitting, we picked this location on purpose. We're sitting in front of a really cool dwarf uh, Japanese maple, Mikawa, Mikawa Yatsubusa. Mikawa Yatsubusa, really tight foliage overlapping like the um, tiles on a roof, really mm -hmm. cool dwarf. Um, it's uh, Jim, one of his favorites, it's one of Mark Wethington's favorites. I mm -hmm. was looking at a Mark's old list today uh, and it is a really cool one. Um, and then over on top of that, there's another really big one. And then uh, earlier, uh, Alexander was showing you another one that's nearby called Waterfall. All right, Jim. Um, well, let's start by, uh, I teased the um, symposium. So let's start by talking about the symposium. Um, tell, us, tell us all about it. Yeah. Um, Lynn is actually on the board of the North American Maple Society. And the, then there's an international part of this. And uh, the North American Society meets usually every other year or every a uh, year or so, often on the West Coast, or it's been in Washington, D.C., it's been in Connecticut. But they every three years, they do an international uh, meeting. And it was supposed to be two years ago, and then our fr friendly COVID came along, and, uh, and it got postponed. And, uh, and it was being organized by somebody else, but then uh, Lynn was on the board. So Lynn's been... It, it is unfair to say that I'm helping Lynn on that. I'm doing a few things, but she has solo put that thing together, getting speakers, buses, hotels, post tours. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite an undertaking. So we'll, we have uh, uh, speakers coming in. We will be here on Saturday at the Arboretum, but uh, we, we start by going uh, to various places. We're going to be going to Duke Gardens. We'll be going to... Uh, uh, Plant the lights and uh, uh, for folks, and then there's a post tour in the Asheville area. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Cool. And so. your house as well is on. The Our tour. house is on the tour, which is this has been Maple Month for us. So uh, 
including this event. And then she's picking people up at the airport. We have guests staying with us. And so it's, uh, it's going to be fun time by all. So, <laughs> And it is this event, this symposium is full. So they're, yeah. they're not taking any more people for it this year's, but keep your yeah. uh, ears open and you can join future symposia yeah. if you would like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do have some links if you could post. Um, there is the um, International Maple Society. They have a web, a web page and it's got a lot of good information on it. Um, and they do have a journal, which Jim is going to hold up. Uh, and their webpage has a huge FAQ about Japanese maples, and eventually it's going to have the online cultivar list of the official cultivar registered cultivar list of all the Japanese maples that there are. It's not on there right now. No, uh, <laughs> the maple uh, Acer is pretty disorganized, especially the Japanese maples, and it's uh, uh, well. We met a couple of years ago in in Oregon, and. Uh, and the president of the international group said, well, you know, the Oak Society is so organized, everybody booed, though, because they didn't say. So there's a, east, not East Coast, West Coast, but Acer Quercus. Well, you know, it's a, in a way, it's understandable that there's more scientific interest in oaks than, frankly, in Japanese maples. And, uh, and so they're hoping to get it more organized, but it has been, it's chaotic in the naming uh, it's highly market driven and which creates some issues at times. Well, sure. I'm so. sure it's hard to keep track of all the uh, cultivars that everyone's yeah. going to put out and they don't register. Yeah. Um, there's also a link, if uh, Blake will put it on, for the North American branch of the International Maple, S Maple Society. That's a cute little name there. And they yeah. have a really nice website as well. Uh, and then um, if any of you are interested in joining the Southeast Regional group, interest, group. interest Group of the North American Branch of the International Maple Society. Right, right. Um, so. Actually, uh, uh, Jim and his wife are the people to contact about that. And they have an um, uh, email group where they send yeah, out emails, yeah. email blasts it, and stuff. It's, it's very informal, no officers. It's not a 501c. It's, yeah, there's no dues. We're just trying to get enthusiasts together and, and share information. We're going to try to do a grafting workshop this winter. Oh, cool. Excellent. So if you can throw Lynn's, I have Lynn's email address. You can throw that in. You guys can email her and, and join that group. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, how did you guys get into Japanese maples? Um, well, we, uh, we really got into it from the gardening, just gardening itself. And, and Lynn is really the, uh, the person that you'd want to talk to mostly about that because she uh, just developed an interest in gardening. She, on her own, got a certification of the North Carolina Nurse Women's Association. She's a certified plant specialist, and she started doing design. So over the years, we bought, everybody would buy at least one Japanese maple. I remember we bought our first one, and and then, you know, we started buying more, and uh, and it was just extraordinary to see the varieties. and and. I, I'm a collector by nature. It's a disease that runs in my family. Uh, Lynn is, is an enthusiast of all plants, but she loves maples too. And, and uh, I guess I have her tied around my finger because if I say I like it, she'd buy it. You know? So I got to be careful uh, that I don't mean to, to force myself on that, but she, she'll, she'll get it. But, but we stay away from gigantic ones. Okay. Because, you know, you start running out of space. Sure. And we don't have, uh, we have a shady yard like many Raleigh homes. And so it's, uh, if they really demand sun for, to, for like red color, that can be a disappointment. So. Well, good. Uh, so um, you, have, um, you have this love of all plants, but Japanese maples in particular. Mm -hmm. do, you have, do you have a favorite that you like? It depends on what uh, time of year it is. Sure. Uh, there are certain ones, and some of these are, uh, there's some sentimental favorites. Uh, I mean, you certainly like Makawa Yatsubusa, like this one. And we have two of those. We have one, though, we've had longest in a pot, and it's still tiny. In fact, it's probably older than the one that we have in the ground, which is, we don't usually buy a tree this big, but it's probably four feet high. But I'll bet you that tall one is is younger than the one in the pot. But uh, 
Uh, I like, um, you know, uh, some of the variegated ones can be awfully pretty. There's one called Ariadne, which is remarkably mm -hmm. beautiful uh, variegated plant. Uh, I, uh, for sentimental reasons, I like uh, uh, Japonicum, which are, have the big leaves. And yeah. This one is called Rising Sun, and it has leaves the size of dessert plates. And uh, my girls got me that for Father's Day, and, and Lynn said, oh, he won't know what that is. And they had it out on the deck, and I walked down, and I said, that's Rising Sun, and they all their jaws all dropped <laughs> because sometimes I just need to surprise them occasionally. So I don't always get it right, but uh, I got that one right. So. I really like those big leafed ones oh, too, yeah. the, Jap the japonicums and the yeah. shirsuinums. And they're they're coming into the japonicums. They're coming into the fall season where they they got reds, yellows, and oranges. It's going to be quite spectacular. The one over at the corner here uh, is is called Aconitifolium, and it's starting to, to get red. And ours is beautiful vermilion color right now. So in the yard. we're still a little bit early though yeah. for most of the fall most color. Of, yeah, y'all have plenty of time to come on out after this talk. Yeah. And Look around and yeah. um, uh, enjoy the fall color. I I did a quick run around the arboretum today, looking for fall color on our Japanese maples. Yeah. Um, found a couple. Bihu. Bihu, yes. Uh, yeah, had they, some excellent yellow yeah, color. We have two yeah. of those in the garden. I guess you, have you probably have one. You have three. Oh, we have three. Okay, <laughs> I saw two. <laughs> so, yeah. um, uh, um, let's see, Sango Kaku. Okay, it has some nice color on it right now, uh, and um, that's see. the. Uh, Red twig dog. Yeah, and Orion had some really Orion, nice color. yeah. That's uh, a neat. Those are three, so those are earlier. Yeah. But most of them are, well, this one hasn't colored up at all yet, but the no. one over over in back um, is just starting to turn. And most yeah. of the ones in the garden are just starting to turn. Yeah, yeah. So, so excellent. So um, what, is, what is so special about Japanese maples? Why do you guys like them so much? Well, uh, in... Uh, Having been to Oregon, you know, you get Japanese you get maple envy if you go to Oregon and their yeah. fall colors are spectacular. But it's the spring colors for maples are like flowers. I mean, they yeah. literally have flowers, some of them, and, uh, but the colors come out like, uh, they'll, they'll be one that'll be bright red, but it's essentially a green tree. It'll, it'll turn green by the time the uh, summer comes. But, you know, flowers are ephemeral anyway, so yeah. I don't mind that. But also just uh, uh, maples have immense variety. Their structure, even when the leaves aren't on there, they can be spectacular, a sculpture almost. Uh, then, and then some of them have uh, amazing leaves yeah. uh, and variegations and different sizes. It's just incredible, the, the variety. Huge variety, and, the sizes too. Yeah, right? yeah. And then even, uh, even the bark can be fascinating. Be who you just mentioned in mm -hmm. the, in the winter time, it doesn't show it now, it will be a yellow tree. And the one over mm -hmm. here is spectacular. And yeah, it's, it's just, got great bark color. Yeah. yeah. And so, and then there's, there's ones that are called pine bark or rough bark. There's one actually in Japanese, it's called Arakawa, which means rough bark. And the one here is a fascinating tree. It's over in the older part of the garden, but it swoops over and but it's extremely rough bark. You know, yeah. it's it's, uh, it's fascinating the just the variety, huge variety for yeah. just yeah. you know just a small group of trees. And Acer palmatums, there's so many varieties, and these are these are essentially they're the same species. Yeah. They're the same species, and you'd never guess that, you know, just looking at that. So. Now, not every Japanese maple is a Acer palmatum. Though. Correct. There are a couple of species. Yeah, there. there's uh, Shirasawanum, depending how you want to pronounce it, um, and Acer japonicums, which tend to be sturdier branched trees, which, and both are sometimes referred to as full moon maples, which mm -hmm. is a confusing term. Uh, but they both can be called that. And uh, they tend to have kind of orbicular kind of leaves, round leaves with many more lobes than the palmatums, the classic, sure. the leaf that's the symbol of the arboretum is a palmatum sure. leaf. So. And they, the, the palmatums will have five, seven, or nine lobes, right? Five to seven usually, yeah. it can be three. Uh, some of the trees can have, the, some of the leaves, every leaf might look different. It, it's, yeah. They can be really some yeah. strange looks to them. Too, and the so. japonicums can go above that even. Yeah, nine yeah, nine, even 11. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so 
there's a lot of cultivars of them too. Do you know how many cultivars there are? Oh, uh, I hear thousands. I don't, I don't, I have no idea. And I don't know what to believe. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of duplicates that have, oh, yeah. you know, one plant that has two names yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I, I was, did a little bit of um, looking up on our database today. We have here at the Arboretum, a total of 158 of the uh, plants that you can call a Japanese maple. It's mostly Acer palmatum. We have a few, um, 144 of those. We have a few japonicums, four of those. We have one Cyboldianum, three Pseudocyboldianums, six Shirsoanums. Mm -hmm. And then if you expand what you consider to be a Japanese maple uh, and include uh, Bergerianum, we have nine of those, and four Grissiums, mm -hmm. and two Pictums. Yeah. So 160 ish, 170 ish. Yeah. How many do you have in your yard? About 220. 220. And for comparison, we're 10 acres here. How big is your acre and a third? Acre and a half. So, <laughs> so, and a third. so, so a lot of we are always pickles. willing to buy the dwarves. Sure, yeah, I bet you do have a lot of dwarves. So, and we have a lot of pot plants too, right? Yes, yeah, they grow great in pots. Although, I would my experience has been the palmatums stick to the palmatums. Uh, the uh, I, I think that they can uh, be at risk, the sheer swamps and the and the japonicums can be at risk as pot plants, you know, so. At uh, risk, like, yeah, they, too they, susceptible to drought and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, uh, for some reason, deer seem to favor japonicums. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a deer fence in our backyard. To, it's the only way we can have hostas, so. Yeah. Uh, um, so, well, uh, talk a little bit more about growing a um, Japanese maple in a pot, uh, you know, and, and do you have any bonsai? Do you do bonsai? Or? I, uh, I, I'd like to someday, but uh, when, uh, when I uh, found out that, that someone has to, almost, you have to water them almost every day and uh, the, the babysitting, I'm not sure I'm ready to take that on. Okay. Uh, I think they're, they're amazing and, they, and some of them do great, but, but almost any palmatum will do excellently in a pot and they'll, like goldfish, they'll, they'll, they'll tend to stay smaller because they're in a pot. The leaves and the structure of the tree, uh, they can do very well in pots. Uh, uh, Japanese maples, just besides just the pots, you can also prune them to fit your rock garden. You know, they can, they can be a tree that if allowed to grow, it might go 12 feet, but you might be able to keep it at four. And yeah. uh, yep. and so that's that's pretty special too. But they do well in pots, and we don't always get to this, but they probably should be repotted every couple of years. And that that means trimming the roots. Uh, we have somebody in our interest group who has all kinds of plants in pots, has moved to Raleigh, and she she absolutely takes the plant out and totally washes off every speck of dirt, sure, and trims it down and then puts all it back. Dirt, and yeah. so we just. We we have great intentions of doing things that we never get to. So, you know, so. <laughs> uh, any special uh, potting media that you use, or fertilizer, or water, or anything like that? Uh, no, uh, you know, definitely a, a potting mix, and uh, but you know, the commercially available. Um, uh, that's that's pretty much what we do. We we don't um, do too much um, uh, fertilizing. And you got to be careful on the fertilizing of, of variegated plants because sometimes you make some green out and you lose yeah. your, lose your uh, sure of some of that. So, uh, but pots, you know, different shapes and sizes. Uh, we probably have twelve to fifteen plants in pots. What's you know? uh, the kind of the range of pot sizes? What's the smallest and the biggest pots that you have? Oh gosh, the the biggest is is probably that big around, and we have some. We have a couple that are this the tall, tall kind, yeah. You know, thin, tall ones. But then it's a real mixed bag. You know, it looks good to have different sizes sure, yeah, of pots yeah. and and. Uh, so uh, we have found that uh, we have a, a stone patio that we have one spot we call it the death spot. It seems to be heat reflecting up that can really crisp up a plant from the from the stone. Yeah, or yeah, from, like, yeah. A window from the or heat. Something. Yeah, uh, and uh, and we had one tree that I'm convinced we lost because I placed it too close to e glass window. Yeah, 
That's and a big I th thing now. I think it. Uh, I think we fried it. You know, it's it's a shame. It was a nice uh, shishi gashira, you know, yeah. in a pot. You know, and uh, I'd moved it because I, with all the trees we have in our yard, the the branch bombs can be hazardous, and sure. I was afraid we would lose this from a branch bomb. Instead, I cooked it. So yeah, they have you know cases where that e glass you know in a hotel side. Yeah. yeah it'll melt it'll melt the you know. Uh, the paint off a car or it'll burn yeah, people yeah, who are so, yeah. walking around nearby. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, so they're great in a pot. Um, talk about in, in the garden then just um, what kind of conditions do they like in the garden? Some are delicate and, and they, they are understory trees. So they naturally as a uh, species uh, do well in, 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 in shade areas. Uh, but if you, uh, if you really want, the red ones often need a, s some sun, um, and, but you have to be watch, watch out for that. But we, uh, we do like, um, uh, some have to be sighted very carefully. We have yeah. one that's very delicate and we happen to find it, it's, we got it near the house, so it doesn't get as much sun. Uh, in fact, I was afraid the dryer was going to, be blowing on it too much. So I actually built a chute for the dryer. So it just blows it away. Okay. All for a tree, you know, so, <laughs> but you know, it hey. was, a, it was a nice, it's a nice tree. Yeah. And um, so, but we've, uh, they don't like wet feet, okay. you know, so you can't have soggy ground. We have a nice slope, which is tiresome at times, but is nice because we have good drainage. And so that, that helps a lot. Uh, so, so part sun, unless it's a pure red one, which would appreciate a little bit more sun. Correct. Yeah. And, um, not wet soil. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That'll kill them for sure. Now so. the, um, the dissected leaf ones, the linear lobium ones, do they mm. need more shade than, uh, the regular leaf ones? No, not necessarily. This, this one up here, waterfall mm -hmm. is in pretty much sun. Well, that's and, in full, full sun. Yeah, yeah, and that 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 tree was named in the 1920s by an American. So, yeah. so it's uh, it, a lot of them are fairly recent yeah. uh, ones. But uh, but so they're tougher than you might think. There's one that you have. We also have it too, and it's called red filigree lace. It is unbelievably delicate leaf. I mean, it looks like strings, you know, like tatting of something that people have done it, and it's red. Um, and it's a remarkable plant. You'd think this, this has got to be so tender, but it's, it's pretty tough. Yeah. It's also yeah. remarkable because that tree and our tree exists because of one tree that, was, that somehow survived for 20 years, had never been propagated, and it was shifting all over the place. It started out in Washington State, ended up in British Columbia, another place in British Columbia, and eventually ended up, ended up at Isley Nursery. And they're the ones that successfully propagated it. It's the only reason we have it. That one tree well, that's cool. was kept alive for that long. I think that's and an amazing and story. And it sounds like, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've, we've moved, sometimes I tell Lynn she should have the plants on casters because she, she does move them around. And sometimes you have to yeah. find a right spot. Sure. Um, so. And they can tolerate being transplanted pretty they easily? They can. Uh, you uh, you need to keep your eye on them. Like any new plant, it's all, as if it's new, you have to water it until it really gets established. Yeah. You know, so. and you, do you so. root prune it first and then dig it up, or do you just go ahead you and know, they, pull it right out We've talked the about that, but uh, they're fibrous roots, and they're pretty well contained. I think the japonicums and the shirasawanums have longer roots, and you will find an occasional root, but they're very fibrous and they're pretty easy to dig up. And, and sometimes we've had to, uh, we had one pot that got waterlogged mm -hmm. and it's like, oh no, you know, and, and oh, this was a great time because Lynn had just broken her ankle. So I had her out there, we had to turn this, I mean, it was a big pot. It was stood this high yeah. and that big around. And so we had it on the ground and I'm, she's holding onto the pot and I'm trying to yank the plant and we had to plant it that day to, into the ground. Sure. So it was a, a weeper too. It was a good sized plant. So. Uh, the variegated ones, do, do they um, full sun, part sun? Is there a, a good mostly, place for them? mostly shade? They, I don't think. I, although, I've, we were there's a nursery near Carborough called Get Rooted Nursery. It's a very uh, 
good supply of uh, maples there, and they have one that I would have, it's called Lil Ann's Jewel, and it's very, uh, almost like Hannah Matoy, very colorful red and, and, and white and colors, and this guy's, Ch Chad there at Get Rooted showed it to us, and he has it growing, growing in the blasting sun, and it was beautiful. So does uh, he have irrigation on it? To, no, uh, no, oh, no. Wow. Okay. So, but most of ours that really have the nice variegation are down in the woods. Yeah, we have a big, a large collection of our variegated ones are in yes. the Japanese garden or in the Lath House. Yes, where they get some decent shade, or in the Asian yeah. Valley areas. Or they, the or the old area. They, there's one Shigi Tatsusawa yeah. that has wonderful variegation. And it's it's sheltered pretty well. It's really in the back there, yeah. so near one of the bihus. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah we have them tucked up and under yeah. a lot of the larger trees all yeah. over the place. Um, Japanese maples was a, a huge. Um, J. C. Ralston was a huge fan of Japanese maples, and uh, which is why it's our symbol today. And there's an apocryphal or hyperbolic story that no matter where you stand in the JCRA, you can see a Japanese maple. Yeah. I, I don't think that's strictly true. Um, so, oh, 10 Mark, acres and 150 plants. Mark claims plants. his kids you know, couldn't find one. So anyway, yeah. so that was when it was a year. Yeah. Years but ago. Um, uh, so our love of Japanese maples here goes back yeah. 45 years now. Um, uh, I have some videos that at some point, Blake can post those in the chat um, of Mark talking about Japanese maples at different points in his career. One is a, one video is just a year old. The other one's about eight years ago. And then, um, then we are 10 years ago. And then we've got one from 1980 of JC Ralston talking about Japanese maples. Yeah, I wanna maples. see so that. There's a yeah. video, a link to that from an old, um, there's an old show on PBS, yeah. uh, gardening show that he was a guest on and he did a so. segment about Japanese maples. Me, people might be surprised at the one in the, uh, the circle up here and they, you know, it is an older tree, but it's only been there since 2002. It was at a professor's house or somebody's house. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, so it was big when they planted it sure. here. And that's uh, another one that's in blasting full sun. Yeah, And yeah. it's a cut leaf type. Yeah, anyway. well, and that if to get the red color, you need that. So, yeah. So, uh, and t Tim Alderton uh, prunes that, does a great job. Mm -hmm. Lynn and I do pruning, but... Uh, I probably wouldn't touch that one. I would if it was on my house, but uh, when it's state-owned property, yeah, I, I'll let Tim do it, and he he is very good pruner. Sure, so. yeah. Um, now pruning, um, I was going to talk about it later, but we might as well talk about okay. it now. We brought it up. It's actually not terribly hard to prune a Japanese maple, right? No, I, I don't think so. Well? It does. Uh, some people seem to be afraid to do it. It's like, oh, I don't know how to. Do it. Um, and the best way I I usually tell it is. Uh, we often have in mind what we'd like to, because we've. It might be a tree that we're familiar with, and and it's because you saw a specimen you liked one time, and you say, "Well, that's what I want to do." Uh, it it, but it's it the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some of them just need to be thinned out, or they have branches that just go crazy, and some are just frankly wonky plants. Yeah, you know, and they need a lot of work. There's. There's one over here just before you get to the Japanese garden uh, on the way to the lath house. And uh, it's called uh, Chishio Improved, which is a illegal name. Yeah. They should be called a Shin Chishio because Shin means improved. Uh, but Lynn and I have pruned that for two years trying to get it to look ha halfway decent. It, it's, a, it's a type of tree where the branches might be going great, and then suddenly they'll send one just at, not just crossing, but sending at a bizarre angle going off, and it just yeah. makes it look, for, honestly, not a very attractive tree. And yeah. so working to get those off is, is, uh, can be tar important to do. Now, they, in the old, uh, the, they call it the north, is that the north? Uh, that's north, and that's east. The, the east section. There's some big old maples I don't think were ever pruned. Yeah. And there's there was one that Lynn and I spent uh, probably a half day, and uh, and I still think it could do some more. It was a big tree, but it had 
dead stuff in there and it had strange branches going over and the years ago those would have been better if they'd been taken care of but but the staff you know there's not enough staff to yeah. do that and yeah. and and mark understands that and you know i certainly understand that it's a you know we were pruning this winter and we didn't get to prune our own <laughs> yeah so, so, so with january and february is when you want to do it. Uh, uh, you don't do it later because of sap flow, right? Well, in the spring, uh, Tim, Tim told us uh, uh, it doesn't matter, but we generally avoid it if it's starting yeah. to bud out. But uh, you can prune them any other time of the year. Sure. Yeah. But the winter time is so nice because you can see the structure. You can. You can you know, then and, shape and direct and it. You look at this wa uh, waterfall back here, you can't see the structure you know, unless you'd crawled underneath it and, you right. know, get on your hands and knees. And even this Makawa Yatsubusi, you can't see its structure with the leaves on it. Yeah. So do yourself a favor, you can really see it. We call it Zen pruning anyway. I hate pruning shrubs, you know, to shapes. Uh, and But Japanese maples, I won't say art's not the word, it makes it sound more highfalutin than, I, than we are, but it is... It is, you, you kind of look and say, you know, and Lynn and I, we, we're a great team on this because we both have veto rights. Sure, okay. Because if I say, I think idea. that branch should come off and she's, she can veto that. And I said, okay. Yeah. And we may come back next year and say, you know, and she might say, it's time to come off. And, sure. And then maybe we will. And so uh, uh, sometimes it needs some time too anyway, especially if, it, if it's only been up a, a year or so, we kind of. Just give it a break. Yeah, the, let it let it, let see what's going to happen, right? You know, some are, some are very fast growers. They though, are, and some are pathetically some grow an inch maybe in a year. Yeah. So, I have a emerald lace yes. in my yard, and it's about four feet tall and wants to be about ten or twelve feet wide. Yeah, yeah. Um, I prune that very very hard every three years or so. Yeah. I really get in there, but I in the winter. Yeah. And I'm I'm trying to naturally have it naturally encourage it to have these contorted branches yeah. that go up and around. Well, the emerald lace here, which is on the other side of the scree garden, it's one of the, there's only a couple Japanese maples over at that end. Yeah. It has rooted itself, which is unusual for Japanese maples. The branches come down and they touch. It's layered it, itself. It has layered itself and it's grown, you know, it's a big trunk now. Too. Yeah. So, that one, by the way, was found in North Carolina. I mean, the emerald lace is a North Carolina maple. Japanese maple. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's very cool. So, uh, do you know who found it? Nah, it, it might it? be in Vertree's book. We can okay. talk about that. In a little yeah, we'll bit, talk so. about Vertree's yes. at the end. Yeah. So, um, so, all right. Let's go back a little bit and talk. Go back to the growing. Okay. Um, where in the U.S. can you grow Japanese maples? There's zone five to nine. Are there any additional restrictions? Uh, there are there are some newer varieties coming from uh, I think it's Isley uh, that are they've been bred to grow up north maybe uh, possibly in Michigan and well so certain parts of Michigan that you can definitely grow but I'm talking about mm -hmm. Upper Peninsula upper, yeah. Wisconsin Minnesota they're trying to find a market for those because people really like them but they sure. uh, uh, my sister lives in Florida forget it. You know, okay. Just, yeah. So she grows palms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have stuff we can't grow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. So. so most of the U.S. then, I mean, from you consider, say, northern Florida all the way up to southern Michigan. Yeah. That's most of the U.S. And Texas, right? you know, there was a, it used to be a guy at, in the Maple Society. Uh, he retired and moved to Italy, but he was in Dallas and he had his own, uh, own uh, maple nursery there. And you wouldn't think. Dallas could. Now they probably needed to make sure they watered stuff, and and there was a, yeah. a bonsai guy there too. So, uh, but probably they a lot get, easier in yeah, a pot. You can yeah. control the sighting so, better, right? Yeah, uh, but California, all, certainly all the Bay Area, going all the way up, and of course you get maple envy in Oregon. Oregon but even Washington. even they had, yeah, even they got fried. Was the last year got 115 degrees in Portland at one point. Yeah, they have, it's so nice there, and except for one day a year, and it's blistering, or one yeah, week a yeah, year. So. Yeah, but uh, their, their colors, and, the, and the, the spectacular growers are out there. The, the man who developed this one is Talon Buckholtz, who's gonna be our yeah. main speaker on this trip. Uh, he, and Talon is probably the, 
to me, the most amazing uh, grower has come up with so many varieties. Uh, there's probably a dozen of his here. This is his most famous. I, yeah. I saw the original one of this, and it's 12 feet tall there at his, at his uh, nursery. He's, he's also real big into conifers. Yes. And uh, this past spring, we had a conifer plant sale, our online plant sale. Yeah. And we got most of them from Buckholes and Buckholes Nursery yeah. in Washington, yeah. shipped them from there. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, so he's, yeah, he's a big name. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think he's pretty funny too. He, we were on the bus with him one time and somebody asked him, well, can you tell this variety from this? And and he just was, he's kind of droll. And he said, well, you know, some people claim they can, but no. You yeah. Know, the, there's so many that look just, you know, unless you, you happen to know the name tag. Oh, oh that's such a thing. Sure. Well, you know, with they're thousands liars. of them, there's, <laughs> there's a lot that look almost exactly oh, alike. Yeah. You know? so especially some of the green ones. They'll yeah. throw fancy names at them. And, sure. So, you know. That's marketing to get yeah, you to buy. Yeah, and the yeah. American names are, you know, you kind of always tell them. So <laughs> I feel the same way about wine. You know, yeah. the people who say it tastes like leather and currents, tastes like wine to me. It all tastes like wine. Yeah, it's, uh, you know. It's, so. it's, it's, yeah. um, all right. Uh, well, let's move on from growing them. Um, we can come back to it later. Uh, um, but I'd like to, to have you talk a bit about what you and Lynn do here. I kind of sort of teased it a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but if you go into more detail. Yeah, for, well, for the, uh, uh, our first volunteer job, we did plant identification and mapping, and that was, uh, that was your predecessor. We, mm -hmm. we came in there, and uh, that was kind of fun. And then uh, we've gotten to know Mark Wethington, and he's been at our house, and he asked us to be, to be the pruners, and we were kind of shocked, honored, and uh, we weren't sure what Doug and Tim was going to think of this because, you know, and... Uh, Just keep them in the loop and they'll be happy. Well, right? yeah, and uh, and so I think we earned our keep. We had to, you know, we uh, I think the first one we pruned was the one in Japanese, the Kiyohime, the one that spreads about 20 feet this way and it's probably this tall in its spectacular tree, but it, it needed a lot of uh, pruning. Um, and so, you know, I think Doug thought we were okay at that point. And... Yeah. Uh, and so we got some confidence. I mean, we had confidence in our own stuff, but you know, it's a big responsibility in taking what I consider public property and doing that. So we were honored to do that. So we we would try to come one day a week and get as many as we could or reasonably. And we've never done them all in one season. There's just too many. Oh no, yeah, yeah, way too many. And so we we do that and we do that primarily in January and February. Uh, although if we were looking out. Now we saw one that was kind of lanky or something. We had a, a tool. We might might trim it, you know, because sure. you know we'd have to make sure you had our badges on. So oh, definitely have there. your volunteer badge so, on if you're so. out here doing stuff. And then you asked us to do the measurement, which we've been lax on since uh, you know the last couple of months because of this uh, symposium. But we'll get back on that. But we're measuring uh, uh, the uh, height using the inclinometer and yeah, uh, the clinometer, right. clinometer, and the, and then we're measuring the uh, its spread, and and also its uh, caliper. Yeah, the it's diameter a, of the yeah. main trunk. If yeah. it's a multi-trunk tree. And and, so and uh, yeah. so that's been uh, uh, interesting process. Interesting to see. Uh, no, a lot of them, of them you don't have to use the clinometer for. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not tall enough for you to stand back <laughs> yeah, and yeah, so. use the, it's basically a, a protractor that you look through and you measure the angle. Yeah. And then you plug in your measurements and the computer does the trigonometry yeah. to yeah. figure out the height. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so like this guy here, you just walk up to with a tape measure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now this one you had to call us back on because I guess this is called Trompenberg, the tall one back here, which is came from... Uh, um, Netherlands, a lot of trees come out of the Netherlands and Italy, New Zealand, but uh, that one we had to redo. That one's a tough one because it's kind of slammed in there against the wall. It can be hard to tell exactly. Yeah. You know, they get, they get pretty, uh, uh, they can take up more space than you realize. Uh, one, of my, our, one of my favorite trees, you were asking them for a favorite, was, uh, is Okashimo, which you've got, which interestingly, that was written about in the, Japanese literature in like 1704. And so um, uh, it's, a, it's a neat plant, but it's really pressed 
in against some other trees. It's unfortunate, it, but you know, it's really, you know, other plants, you know, kind of coming. Yeah, out, so. we have so many trees here. I mean, yeah. I asked you to measure one and try, you have to back up further away than it is tall. Yeah. And then you have to kind of find yeah. the top yeah. of the plant. And yeah. It's kind of hard to do. It's hard to, yeah. it, when all the other, all the greens mixed up, you can yeah. tell, hard to tell, is that what, for that tree or that tree? So. Yeah. We do have um, another measuring team. Uh, other, yeah. And they do all the other trees. You I know. You're just in the Japanese maple. Yeah. So they've got the, yeah. They've got the 2,000, we've got the 200. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're um, probably almost done. No, just, no, no, no. <laughs> they're, <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're making been, progress equivalent We've to been slackers lately, yeah. so. But, but um, then, then uh, I, I did tours in the spring. I did four tours. Yeah. I, and they went well? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, I tried to keep them 10 people or less because it gets too crowded. You can't hear and you yeah. can't get up close. And because on Japanese maples, they're they're wonderful from a distance. That's a great thing, but you you miss out if you don't walk up and look at the plants. And that goes for any plant. Yeah, I think people if they, all they're doing is staring so, a distance, you you miss out some of the most interesting aspects of all these plants. It's yeah, a lot fascinating. Of, a lot of the variegation know? is really oh, only yeah. interesting up close, right? And and, and every spring we just. Yeah. Is is exciting time, you know. We we walk around the garden, get a glass of wine, or whatever you want to call it, you know, and just and uh, and yeah. walk around the yard. <laughs> so. Are you going to do any more tours? Any coming up next spring? Or yeah, I, I or want TV. to, and I was uh, <laughs> wanting to do it this fall, but too many things came up. I guess I could sure. I could uh, say, hey, I'll I'm willing to do one, and because I. Uh, yeah. So it took a while to figure out what I was going to go show. We usually went for about 90 minutes. Yeah. And sometimes went a little longer, you know, but, you know. People, you know so. Well, when you're ready to do another one, talk to Catherine. And yeah, Mark, yeah, and yeah. Catherine's yeah. our volunteer coordinator so. and handles, manages all the volunteer efforts. Yeah. Um, uh, so, well, we've talked about your collection at home. I was going to ask you about that. Um, we talked about some of your favorites. Do you have a wish list? Are there any cultivars you wish you had, but you don't? Or is that kind of <laughs> yeah? Like... That, that that that's always that always happens. And, yeah. And they keep coming out with these new names, and that, so you know we're on the post tour. We're going to Matt and Tim's uh, Mr. Maple, okay. and so we know them. They've been past presidents of the North American Maple Society. So you know, we we've been to their place two or three times, but uh, and uh, staying with us this, this week is. Uh, a woman named Jen Tucker, who runs Jen's Maple Farm in Manchester, Tennessee, and and she's she's our our mentor for our regional interest group. She's going to show us how to do grafting. So she's she's really quite an intrepid lady. So see, and uh, grafting is not the only way to propagate a Japanese maple. It's Correct. probably the most common way, though, right? If you want. The only way, uh, uh, Mikawa Yatsubusa, for example, produces a lot of seed. And they may look like this when they grow up, but you cannot guarantee that that's Mikawa Yatsubusa. They are clones mm -hmm. when you graft. And so commercially, when you want to buy one, you want to know that's what it is. So, uh, you, but there are, you know, Talon Buckholz is always looking at seedlings, mm -hmm. you know, because out of seedlings, you find this one is different. So there's a red version of this. Oh yeah, uh, it's called Neat. Japanese Princess, and uh, and so there's really, you know, you, you got to keep your eyes open. You, yeah. you know. Uh, so there is a maple here that's called uh, Gold Digger. Oh, I saw that today. Beautiful yellow bark yeah. right now. Gold Digger was found. Uh, there's a volunteer, and forgive me, I forget his last name, Laddie. He's retired Hunger. now. Yeah, and he was on my first tour, and uh, and that gold digger was f that variety was found. He found it in his yard and called Matt and Tim Nichols. They came out and they got and they start they've propagated that, and that's where that one came from. But Laddie was on my first tour, and Laddie didn't even know me. But we were working, we came up to this tree, and I said to the group, I said, "You're a privileged group." I said, "Because this tree." came from this man's yard and Laddie looked at me and he said, how'd you know that? <laughs> so you knew, you knew of Laddie. Yeah. And you knew that the tree came from him. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't know, know me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, anyway, it was, it was it actually was, that was special because he, you know, I said, well, you know, things, word gets around. 
<laughs> so, I, I have a um, I have a handful of Japanese maples in my garden, and um, I do have one that's just a seedling of a red leafed variety from here from the yeah. arboretum, and it's beautiful. Yeah. So there's a lot of you don't necessarily have to have a named cultivar. You do there's not. A lot of beauty in just the seedlings. Uh, absolutely, we have one that Lynn's dad. He just called it his red maple, but they mm -hmm. had all these seedlings, and it's a big tree now. Yeah. Uh, Some of the biggest trees we have here yeah. are just unnamed Japanese yeah. maple I took varieties. two, just a red seedling and a green seedling I got from the Arboretum for almost nothing, and I twisted them together, and they've been growing together. Oh, that's so that, cool. So they, they've kind of melded together. Uh, there used to be a, a grower in the east here, Williford. You see, yeah. you see his brand name on all these trees. He hated that, but I, we, it was, you know, that, no, that, it's, that was kludgy to him, but I, it's kind of cool. Because in the spring it comes out, whimsical. it is whimsical. The, there's green and red branches and, yeah. and it's grown together. There's still some gaps, you know, that you can look through. And uh, right near one of the gaps, there's a little red branch and a little green branch. And so that one, we tend to, pruning is odd. <laughs> oh yeah, no doubt. You have to keep the green and yeah, red so, balanced and all yeah. that. I we bet. call it dancing cavalier. If you ever watched uh, singing in the movie Singing in the Rain, yeah, we we call it a dancing cavalier. <laughs> so, so. Very good. Um, okay, so we've talked about growing them. We've talked about pruning them. Talked about propagating them, seed and mm -hmm. and grafting. Um, let's spend a minute or two uh, on some pests and diseases. Okay. Or killing them, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, per stopping them from being killed. Well, you know, Linda and I, neither of us are very good at this. I'm, in fact, I, what I know, I, you know, Mark said on what, uh, his video uh, earlier this year, there's, uh, there's a spot that can form that's, and there's a scale. Um, I just, uh, they're tougher than they see. They, they, are very they tough. seem. You can get powdery mildew, it will not kill it. Okay. okay. So it's just cosmetic. Yeah. Deer will chomp at them, but they'll come back. It's sure. annoying as anything. Sure. Um, if, if you have an early spring and then you have a, you know, a real bad cold, um, that, can, that can wipe out the leaves and it'll, it'll take a while to come back. One year we had it created black spots, and especially in all the red ones. Mm -hmm. But then I'd go to the nursery and I'd see Williford's trees and all the red ones had little black spots. It's just it, it, that cold Yeah, so they got that. a little burn so, on, the yeah. new, on the new growth. So, yeah. And they, uh, uh, so uh, we don't have too much problem with that. You know, squirrels can be annoying. They, yeah. can, they can nip them off the small ones. So we have to cage the small ones in the winter time. It's just... <laughs> Nature is overrated. I've even heard rabbits will do that too. Is that oh, true? Oh yeah, I guess so. I don't know. And of course, deer like certain ones. Yeah. Uh, but the, and then squirrels will get in them with the new buds and in, in in climbing all over. You know, I so I've uh, I had to trap one of them and send him to uh, a different part of the county. So. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so uh, uh, with pests and diseases. Um, the uh, Mark's video that Blake's already posted, um, at the end of it, he has a long 10 minute dialogue about pests and diseases. That's very good. Mm -hmm. I also have some other links I was hoping Blake would post right now. Um, there is a, a link from um, uh, two cooperative extension agencies, uh, two articles about the different foliar diseases and um, uh, aphids and scale and things like yeah. that. We've had aphids on ours, and I, I just get out the the ne you know whatever the neem oil and and spray them down, and that usually sure. takes care of them. Even a blast of a hose will yes, knock the yeah, down. yeah, and uh, but not very often. But they uh, you know they work in a couple of trees close to each other. So um, there's two other links I'd like him to post. Um, one is uh, one of the um, University of British Columbia has um, a big botanic garden and their website hosts a big uh, forum of online plants. And one of those forums is for Japanese maples. And it's the main one that if you have a Japanese maple question, you can go to. Yeah. So you, Blake can post that into the, into the chat. And then uh, the Maple Society, International Maple Society has an FAQ um, uh, that's really good uh, mm. about the basic 
facts about Japanese maples. Now, some some trees at the end of the summer, you can tell they've been insects have been chewing the leaves. Again, it's not. It just makes the leaves look bad. So, it, it you put some systemic and you know stuff on there for uh, understory trees. I think can help with that. And I did that one year, but I, I just not good at keeping up with that kind of thing so well you know it, it, as long as it's not ruining i mean yeah. it, they're not going to kill the tree it's not killing it's just the tree. An aesthetic thing yeah so if you yeah. can live with yeah. some amount of chewing or spotting yeah so, um you know yeah. let nature be nature yeah so okay so you mentioned mr maple and the what's the place in tennessee uh jen's uh, maple farm what are some other good sources for Japanese maples? Well, around here, I, I think uh, Get Rooted is a, is, Get rooted, you, you know, it's, yeah. it's open on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or by appointment. And I've been impressed. He, he gets a lot of trees from Buckholz and Buckholz. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're out in the boondocks, though. You, if you go uh, try to get on your phone to look up a, a tree that you're not fam familiar with, you're not going to get any service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've enjoyed going, uh, going there. Uh, you'd be surprised. You can, f <laughs> if you keep your eyes open, you can find decent trees at Lowe's or Home Depot. You, it'll you surprise you. Yeah. Uh, our current Shishigashira we got from Lowe's. When I was a student uh, in horticulture, I worked at Homewood Nursery in town, and they had a, at the time had a real decent yeah. uh, Japanese maple yeah. um, collection for sale. This is twenty years ago now. Yeah, um, I'm sure we've gotten have some it. from them too. Yeah. So. Uh, um, we and, tend to buy small. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, small's better, right? Yeah. It's e well, e easier to dig a nice, uh, the right size hole, and well, also it's just that you, you, you can spend hundreds of dollars on some of these. You trees. sure can. You sure can, yeah. many hundreds. Um, so, uh, okay, so you've mentioned places to see them in the area. You've mentioned Duke. Here, of course, we want you to come out here and see ours. Mm -hmm. Your garden, which is occasionally open for, for volunteers. For, for volunteers. We have a volunteer tour every year if you want to be a volunteer here. Some of the volunteers open up their home gardens once a year. So mm -hmm. there's that. Um, what are some other good places in the area to see Japanese maples? You know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I can't, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, really. Yeah. You know, there's not That's that it. many places. That's it, we got places. all the good ones? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm sure there's uh, some individuals that have got some nice stuff. There's a, yeah. uh, so, but. If anyone out there knows of any good places to see them locally, throw them in the chat. Yeah. That's so, a good uh, yeah. talking point. Okay. Um, uh, I'm surprised we got through all my questions. We're doing really well. Okay. I, the only other thing I want to talk about are some of the references. Yeah. So well, I already brought show you the the Maple Society newsletter, but uh, the still the premier book is called is Japanese Maples: A Complete Guide. This is version four. This was developed by originally. Uh, with his first name, J.D. Vertrees, great name, but he died in 1993. I've, we've been to his former house where there's some of the original trees are, they're pretty rough shape. And then the version four was done by Peter Gregory of the UK. He died last year. And so the Maple Society has a Peter Gregory award every year that's gonna be mm -hmm. awarded here this uh, Saturday night. Uh, so, I don't know what's next. There's a, there's apparently a, some a Japanese book. I know the Nichols boys have it. Um, we've tried to find it, but it's uh, it's a pretty rare book. Um, sure. You know, uh, it's the sad thing is that there there were undoubtedly beautiful Japanese maple specimens that were in Japan that were cut down during World War II for firewood or for cultivation. Yeah. And, and they're, you know, not that's, replaced. In that's a, not just with Japanese maples, but a lot of plants we lose some really, that have been around for hundreds of years. We lose really good cultivars yeah. um, be, because of just any kind of historical pressure. Yeah. War, or um, a lot of plants go in and out of popularity. So canna lilies um, go back to the mid 1800s, tons of canna lilies. Um, they're not here. They're not yeah. around anymore, cultivars. Um, and there's a reason, you know. There are fads, fads with Japanese maples. You have 
one uh, at, on my tour, and it's called Ornatum, and I've never seen that in a nursery. It's kind of an old-fashioned tree that is still is a decent tree, but nobody's, there's not a market for it anymore. And just around the corner here, there's a, a tree that was very popular for a while called Shana, and it was from a witch's broom. And this one's still pretty decent. It looks rough now, but that's the end of the summer. But Shane is not very popular anyway. I, I don't think it's a sturdy plant. I think it has not stood the test of time. Yeah. And uh, you don't see it that much. And for a while, you saw it everywhere. And sure. So you don't know. It's, it takes some time to see if these are left lasting trees. Even on variegated trees, if they come out with it too fast, you may find that it's not lasting. Not stable. Yeah. yeah. Not stable. Sure. And, uh, and, you know, it's just n nursery. Nurseries have to make money. They, they do. They're not going to exist just to be for fun. And the and new, so, the yeah. new one gets people excited. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, but so. but the so there's a lot to be said about getting the tried and true ones. Yeah. 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 So, excellent. Um, do we have any questions in the chat? Uh, not particularly. No. No. Now would be a great time if you've been saving up your questions. Put them in the chat. Um, we can ask Jim about that. And while we're while you guys are doing that, there's a few more links we can post um, that we didn't get to. So if you collect Japanese maples, there are 17 collectors categories of Japanese maples. Um, linear lobum, mm -hmm. um, dissectum, uh, there's a couple different, three different categories of variegated ones. Yeah. Um, there's amoenum, there's palmatum, there's 17. And I have a PDF um, that you guys can geek out on Japanese maples if you want. and look at the 17 different varieties. They uh, also collectors variety, collectors classified groups. by their leaf shape. And that leaf recently shape, exactly. that's been, uh, you know, I've added some. Uh, there's one leaf shape that's like a feather, Hegaromo, that's uh -huh. called, and it used to be just one variety, but now there's several, but it's a quite extraordinary looking leaf. It does not look like a Japanese maple leaf. Yeah. And then there's one that's kind of cupped, you know, this, uh, this one called Peve over? Starfish, yeah. and they cup down, and it's very intriguing yeah. looking. That's uh, one so. of the 17 varieties of this, the cup this, types. This, this tree, which is, uh, what did I, uh-oh, senior moment. Trumpenberg. <laughs> Trumpenberg uh, it has a little bit of that uh, cupped leaf, too. So, um, Let's see. I also have, uh, if you'll throw those these in the chat, um, Back when Jim first started with uh, being a volunteer with me with, with the um, tree measuring, I generated a PDF file that is a map to all of the Japanese maples at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum. Um, it's actually, there's two PDFs if you'll drop them both into the chat. One is the um, strict sense Japanese maple, so it's palmatum, japonicum, shirsuanum, and, the, uh, and then the other one is the broad sense Japanese maples um, uh, that we have. And of course that map's not very, not very busy, but the other one, it's very busy map. Yeah. Um, but it's a good, if you wanna come here on your own uh, and you don't wanna wait for Jim's next tour and you wanna <laughs> come here on your own and look at Japanese maples, you I, can use that map as a guide. Uh, it's been great because I didn't know s some of them existed. And when we had to go measure some, yeah. I said, I don't remember ever seeing this. And so we had to dig around and we found it kind of buried They're by a tree. They're so, some pretty tight corners, you know, some of Tim them. Tim said he sure. was going to see about moving that one, but uh, so I didn't had no idea. It was there, so. Oh, there's another. Um, Jim had a great slideshow that he sent me when we were talking about setting this interview that he did for the Gardeners of Wake County. And, um, and, and the pictures are all from our yard. From his yard, yeah. And he talks about his favorites and photos of his really beautiful backyard. Um, uh, if you want to post that, that's a real nice slideshow to look at. Um, and that is everything I have. I think we have uh, said everything, unless you have anything else you want to mention about Japanese maples before we go. No, I better not. You better not. <laughs> and, did any questions make it into the chat? Uh, somebody asked, uh, where can you find really large pots for maples? Oh, well, um, gosh, you know, we, we've gotten them at Homewood. We've gotten, uh, you know, almost any, any of the big nurseries will have, have pots. We wait for sales because they can be pretty pricey. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, make sure they have holes in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not all of them do, right? You can drill the holes, but the, you you go into winter with a with a pot that has an any hole. Well, you'll drown them for one thing. Yeah. It, it's, uh, well, you don't want to drop 500 bucks on a nice, real nice glazed huge pot yeah. and then crack it drilling a hole in it. For right, the right. With so, a hole. We, um, we've had them grow through the pots into the ground <laughs> and we had to break one pot to, and save, yeah. to save the tree. So... Lynn uses the half pots, you know, to kind of buries them, looks kind of. There's a place nice. over by the um, farmer's market called World Import. Market yeah. in, World Market Import, Market yeah. Import, something yeah. like that. And um, they have huge pots. They have a huge selection of all kinds of pots mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, nice glazed ones and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, bit real big, as big as, almost as big as you yeah. could fit into your vehicle. Yeah. I imagine. Um, and also at the um, uh, fairgrounds across the street from the entrance um, is a is a um, place that makes cast concrete things. You can get, you know, angels and dragons, but you can also get pots there too. So yeah. um, those would be some places that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, big Bloomers has pots, not too many of big ones, but they, I think, have a few. Well, you know, uh, Homewood. Uh, Homewood's real good, yeah. Um, Atlantic Avenue. Yeah, uh, Atlantic Avenue. The one down in, in Apex, the uh, Garden Supply, right? Okay. The, the, they can be pricey, though. If, sure. Uh, uh, there's nice ones that uh, if you've ever uh, been at Norwood Road Nursery. Okay. Uh, Lynn worked there, you know, for a while, you know, uh, years ago. Uh, they've had a good collection. We bought a number of pots from them. So, mm -hmm. but we always wait for the sales. Sure, you know, honestly. So. Yeah, end of season. Yeah. Right now, Lowe's is putting in all their Christmas tree stuff. Oh. So you can probably get some pots on sale if you want. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, well, I think that's about all the time we have okay. time for today. So, yes, so uh, right. I would like to thank you, Jim, for yes, coming out and yeah, talking to us Jim. about Japanese maples. This has been wonderful. Lot, okay. Got lots of ideas for the gardens and. Learned a lot about Japanese maple. So thank you, Jim. And thank you to everybody who joined us in the Zoom today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the program and we hope you'll join us next week, next Wednesday for, uh, we're doing Gardening 101, November Gardening Tasks with Tim and Sophia. So that should be educational and fun as it always is when we have them on the show. So thanks again for coming out and seeing us and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye everybody.